Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Samer, along with my co-hosts Stank and Poppy Latte, and you're watching The Loose Cannons, presented by Red Cap Plumbing and Air, a Tampa-based company who takes pride in their reputation for timely service, professional results, and exceeding your expectations. They truly define hashtag Tampa proud. The number is always is on the screen, along with the instructions on how to get your phone call in. Um, I don't know how to start a show like this, honestly. Um, we were good friends with Mark Cook, um, and we wanted to, you know, honor his legacy, his his memory by allowing the three of us to share our memories of him and, you know, funny little stories and anecdotes and also allowing you guys to do the same. So this show is going to be more telephone call based than any of our other shows probably. And um, we might talk a little, about, a little bit about the game, but... Um, that's not what's important right now. We just wanted to, you know, send our condolences and our prayers out to Mark's entire family, also uh, Daisy, and and just, you know, that whole tragic. I don't know. It just it's terrible. It's it's not something you ever want to hear or find out about. You know, we had Mark on recently, which was really kind of a blessing in disguise. You guys remember how cool it was for him to talk about the humility that he felt having people to reach out and show him love after, you know, leaving Pewter Report and to kind of, I don't know, I want to say it, it was kind of a weird omen, I guess, where he was able to experience what people say when you pass away, which was, um, I guess, in a way, maybe I would want that too. So um, the floor is up, you know, open for you guys. We just want to hear about what you what you guys think about Mark and what you're going to miss and all that stuff, you know, let's, we don't want it to be a sad episode per se, because Mark was a fun guy and he would want us to have fun. And that's the best way to honor his, his memory, his legacy. And, uh, you know, rest in peace, Mark cook cookie. I don't know. I don't know what else to say, man. Um, listen, man. I mean, just look at, you know, our last episode, he was on with us and, uh, it was, it was a great episode. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, me and Mark had our shirts off. Uh, <laughs> you know, Mark was excited about um, this team. And, uh, you know, probably just, Mark was like the original jackass podcaster. Uh, and uh, I, I model myself after him in a lot of ways. It's my natural personality, but um, that's what originally attracted me to Mark um, was just his his you know, weirdness, his comedic type of timing, and, uh, and, and he was way different than anybody else in the media. Um, it's kind of what drew me to like a guy like Chris Thomas, for those who have been in Tampa for a long time and listened to, uh, to sports radio in this area. You know, we've had, we've had some guys over the years that have made an impact uh, on the Tampa sports market, uh, specifically, you know, the Bucks market, Big Dog and, and Mark. Dog. And, uh, you know, I, I, this one hits real close to home because, uh, and we've grown close to Mark over the years. Uh, the guy was a, incredibly knowledgeable about the history of the team. I've been around a long time, but I don't have the recall that Mark had. Uh, you know, to be able to just remember specific moments about games back in the, you know, late '90s and even even games into the '80s uh, was special. And he really was, you know, a custodian of the history of this team in many ways. There's really nobody else out there like him. Honestly, uh, uh, I was talking to Stank the other day, Samer, about uh, how much Mark, not only his impact on, on the Bucks community, but how he's impacted other content creators and writers, right? Um, Mark was that dude that kind of represented us. Yeah. You know, the people that like what we do are our, our shenanigans and our bullshit and the blue cheese and the chicken wings and the baby oil. Mark was the guy that kind of blazed that path. Like it's okay to be weird. It's okay to have him in old school. On. Him and old, him and old school man on 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 the What the Buck podcast is still by far the best podcast of all time. It, it's legendary. Not I mean, even, especially not even close. Mike. Not even close. Yeah. Nick Nag, I mean, the, 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 the flip phone with the drug that it's at, bro. It's just. It's memories that I'll cherish forever, man. I mean, you'll never have another another duo like that. The chemistry, and they were again, they they blazed that path path for people like us or guys like us that, you know, we're kind of weird, and you guys like us for it. 
but guys like Mark are the ones that allowed us to be weird. Yeah, and well, it's okay that, to be weird. That's what's if you look at barstool and stuff like that. We talk about it all the time. Like that's what people want. They want real. They don't want the canned shit. They're so tired of, of that CNN type personality, that sports anchor type personality. They just want real. Like who gives a fuck if somebody's a fan and covers the team? I never understood that. Oh, go okay, because you can can't be unbiased. No, I don't. I don't necessarily. I want, want a biased want, opinion. Right. I don't want unbiased opinions. I want. I want a fan's perspective. You know, and there's a mix of both out there. And you, you know, some people don't like it at all. They don't like the color. They just want stats and and you know the regurgitation of of the play by play and the box scores. Well, that that you know that's it, that's what made Mark Mark right. So Scott at Peter Report, he does what he does, and you know they mm-hmm. had all those guys. They had John amazing now, and they have Trevor. You know, before John. But yeah. Mark was the guy that walked that line where you're supposed to be 50-50, you know, fan, but you're not supposed to cross over to that realm. You could tell he was like 60-40 fan over journalist, right? You could feel it. So he was one of us. He was a fan who got to cover his favorite team for a living and be in the locker room, do all the shit that you dream of as a fan of a football team. That's what made him resonate with me was I'm reading right articles written by a guy who's a fan like me. He, you know, he's told to hide it and not let it, you know, come through but it came through all his anecdotes his stories those his his articles were different than everybody else's and you could feel that he was a fan and that's what made him so special because he's he's us dude he's literally just he's buccaneer fan who got to live out the dream of actually covering his favorite team for a living which is that means he's never worked a day in his life it's another quote from what the bucks podcast man one of my favorite that that old school uses it's it's ice cream right there's a lot of different flavors and I happen to like the flavor, the flavor of Mark Cook, as we all did. It was, uh, it was, uh, it wasn't vanilla. It wasn't chocolate. It was like you know, it was that multi-flavor stuff. You get a little bit of everything. It was awesome. Yeah, Phil in the chat little- said, Phil in the chat said he was so good when things were at their worst. Facts. Right. Like, listen, <clears throat> the last thing you want to hear about when the Bucks are getting their dicks kicked in is a bunch of you know just bullshit. He made it fun. You know, he 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 he. he I think he always stayed positive, and even though he was a Seminole fan and I'm a Gator fan. I, I still, <laughs> I still liked it. I still liked our back and forth with, uh, with the rivalries. But um, you know, he still made it interesting, man. Um, and I, I really want to hear from everybody. I, I do want to say, um, you know, no, nobody. If you're a fan of Mark, you better not miss Peter, uh, Peter reports show Ooh. tomorrow. You know, we're not trying to take any shine. I, we just, we want to talk. Um, we want to give you guys a chance to talk. I will, I, you know, I'll be tuning in to Peter Report tomorrow. Um, you know, it, to to hear, you know, to hear it coming from them. It's it's going to be everything. And for those um, of the for, for, Trevor's those of you in as well. the, for those of you that are in the chat that have asked, how why did he get canned at Peter Report? What were his future plans? How did he pass away? Listen, man, that stuff is not. First off, we're not privy to everything. Yeah, we don't. We life, don't know. Okay? <laughs> I don't know what his plans were. I don't know why he left Peter. Even if he did tell me, I wouldn't say anything. But my whole thing is there's some stuff that's just off limits, man, and it's not the time nor the place. So, you know, to everybody who has asked that, and for those of you who come in maybe later, let's just leave that off limits, yeah? I get it. We want we all want closure, man. We all want to know why. It's 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 tragic at the at the end of the day, the why doesn't really matter. And we're gonna respect Daisy and Douglas and the family. We're just we're not going to talk about that type of thing. We want we want your your memories, your good memories, uh, 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 your right. interactions with Mark because he was very interactive with everybody. He followed all Bucks fans. He never tried to you know big time anybody. He was you know you could Bro. meet him at their bowling events and he would hang out with you and, and treat you like a, like like family. Dude, um, stink. So we want to hear your stories. Do you guys you remember the best I, stories? Yeah. You have the best stories about him because you you said you met him at all those events all those years back when I was still in high school. You were hanging out at you know, uh, in Orlando meeting up with these, with the Peter report events and all that kind of mm-hmm. stuff. So I, I, yeah, I, I went to I'm several, I went you. to several and, and, uh, like I said, I mean, it's not that one specific meeting with him stands out. One of our most recent meetings where we got to hang out with him at the, uh, the gala event, um, <laughs> at the chair, the Aaron's, uh, family foundation gala event. Uh, he was there, uh, and, uh, you know, it, it was just, it's like a brotherhood. We go up, I pinch his nipple, we kind of punch each other, <laughs> and we talk about how incredible it is that we just won the fucking Super Bowl. He was he was talking about his experience being at the Super Bowl and what that was like. And, um, man, you just can't get any better uh, than, than a guy like that, man. Hey, listen, 
you said he included everybody, interacted with everybody. I, I forget, probably about a, seven, eight months ago. He answered the blue cheese versus ranch on the on the, on the pewter report mailbag. Like I just submitted it fucking around because you know we're always teasing each other, and he mm -hmm. actually answered. I was like, holy shit! <laughs> but did we have <clears> him <throat> on our show the first time before that? Before that question kind of made its way in our in our. We never we didn't have him on. We never had him on like that, bro. We the, had the, him. We the, had him on in the very beginning, right? I remember. Yeah, that. it was only it was, I, I, was, I missed. It was that before one. the blue cheese, the ranch, yeah. and all that stuff. All right, okay. Yeah. Um. Also. Um. You know, going off of what Samer said a little bit, uh, we don't know what happened. Um, and all I can say is Mark is class personified because he, you know, we're friends. Naturally, you know, you're going to ask. And he's like, listen, all, all, I, all I can say is I have a ton of respect and love and I wish Peter Report nothing but the best. That's literally all we got out of Mark. That's about, I mean, class. I, I can't say it enough we we have one person who's ready to talk to us on the before we get into the before i take that call i wanted to say something we've kind of joked around in the past about having honorary loose cannons members and co-hosts and you know i like a loose cannons hall of fame <clears throat> i feel like mark cook should be the first loose cannon hall of famer Fuck yeah would that not make sense? Would that not be? The I want, thing? I want like a little, a little sticker, or a badge, or something, something. man. You, you yeah, want like, something, Samer? Like a loose cannon's ring of honor, and it would be our honor to have Mark Cook be the first loose cannon's ring of honor member inductee. That'd be, that'd be perfect. I think it's perfect. Fuck yeah! Man. Like I'm goosebumped up right now for that. That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. All right. Um, I will take a call from seven one four. You're on with the loose cannons. What's up, man? This is uh, Lewis and SoCal, man. What's up, Lewis? What's up, Lewis? What's up, Lewis? How's it going? Oh man, this is a you know this is a you know this is a hard subject. You know, I mean, uh, you you know, I call I call here, I talk to you guys. We can bullshit talk about how shit Chris Conte is and how Canty. bad Sadie Piscatelli is. <laughs> but uh, you know, this is a oh god. When I heard this, I mean, I think uh, just like. So I've been a, a Lakers fan, a Bucks fan, a Dodgers fan, as far back as I can remember, early '90s, and um, not correlating the both together as far as like as far as impact or anything. But I'm just on me as a personal impact. Um, Kobe was just such an important player because I didn't grow up through Jordan. I saw the tail end, but Kobe was such an instrumental person and player. And just uh, when he passed away, uh, it was just such a gut punch and. There's still parts of me that honestly isn't even over that. And uh, when I heard about Mark dying, passing away the other day, it was just, honestly, I feel like I couldn't breathe. It was like a, such a punch to the gut. I just, uh, because I, like I said, I just saw, I was saying, I like, just saw him on the show with you guys a few days before or a week before. And he, I just, hearing how excited he was in his voice that the new opportunity he was, was going to have because, you know, he's so professional, just, wasn't saying any bad shots at Peter Report and just oh. he was almost like, you know, one door closes, but a brand new, bigger door is going to open. He was just so excited. And I was just so happy the outpour of support that people showed how much we care for him and how much we loved him and how important he was in our life. And my friend, and I think I heard uh, Poppy say it earlier that my very first podcast I ever watched ever in my life was the What the Buck podcast because there was no Buccaneers media or anything here in California. It was just whatever I could watch on. TV or highlights of games or whatnot, and then um, him and Mark Cook, it was just, Magic. it just, it, it, it just went so, they just worked so well together, it was like Roger yeah. Haver, it was even Roper, it was just so, and it, it was just such a, you know, coming in, because <laughs> you said earlier, I'm so, I'm, I am so glad that he uh, got to, his last game, he got to see them win the, uh, yeah. the Super Bowl in, the, in, in Ray J, because you know, we talk about it all the time because we've had so many hard years and Stank's been through all the hard years. I've only been through the mid-90s to now. Right. Even just the last 10, 12 years have been so tough. And it was just so nice that it got to end on such a great note for him. And as he was, we like to see ourselves as true Bucks fans, not all these, some of these people that are just on right now for the Tom train right now, but the never jump ship is what being a Bucks fan is all about. You're gonna go through those hard times, and then they're gonna they're gonna come through for you. And they did for us last year, and I'm so glad they did it for Mark. 
He was a one of a kind. He's going to always be remembered. He's going to be Buck's legend. He'll never be forgotten ever, 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 ever. He's going to always be ingrained in our lives, our minds and our hearts forever. And I just want to say I love his family, his kids, his girlfriend, everything, everyone. And um, we'll miss you. And it's going to be really, really tough. But always remember the good times. We're always going to remember the good times for sure. Absolutely, man. By the way, for those who don't know, the Bucks um, honored Mark last night on the Jumbotron. Uh, it, was, it, was, it was real cool. And then I, I saw after I got home that they, they honored him in the press box as well. Uh, so, uh, cla- you know, first class organization. And we do know everybody in the organization <laughs> loved Mark. They loved him. They loved him, man. And how could you not? Uh, how could you not love a guy like that? Who, you know, and it's not always like that. The media and, and, and the, the teams don't always get along. And it's not like Mark's always said great things about the Bucks. Um, but he was always, the way he did it was always fair. He realized this is, this is games, entertainment. Um, it's never life or death, uh, you know, but these are, that's, it's a business on the other side of things. So to have that type of respect in that building just shows you the, like how, how legitimate the guy was. And I think that's what endeared all of us to him so much because you could feel it. And there's no, no bullshit with the guy. The circumstances are shitty, right? But mm-hmm. having, like, being honored on the Jumbotron, being honored on your favorite team's social media, mm-hmm. I know it's not the scenario that you want it to be in, but that that would have meant the world to Mark just from how much he loved the Bucks, right? Fuck yeah. Dude. I mean, I know it's a sad, sad moment, but you could feel like you kind of swell with a little bit of pride when you saw that on the jumbotron at the game and it was it was chill it was just i don't know it was a surreal moment but you also felt you you were happy that mark got that right that was something that you know it's just a cool moment and um i saw somebody earlier uh send us a super chat donation um sam and socal yeah sam and socal thank you for that um however if anyone moving forward wants to donate uh, we urge you to just go to the Arians family foundation and do it in honor of mark because that's what he wanted so um you know try not to send us any super chat donations tonight um instead do that uh that, that'd be the best way to honor him um we're not thank you also, thank you though sam yeah we, also, appreciate um, it, sam. So, um, hey, we should read the message he said mark lived the dream a lot of us dreamed of covered his favorite team for a living kept it real 24 7 he walked to the loose cannons could run. We we know that he was one of the first guys who 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 gave us love and respect. Man, he was a fan nice. of our show. You know, it was mutual. We, he knew how big of a fan we were of him, uh, and he really loved what we did. We did as well. And uh, you know that was that was awesome. You don't get that. We you know I I I was taken back by by the support he gave us. And um, again, that's the kind of dude he was. Man, he, he didn't have the ego. He uh, he would call you out though, <laughs> you know he was the ginger badass. He would he, he wasn't gonna he wasn't gonna let you walk on him. And if he and if he, if you were talking the, talking bullshit, I'm sure he he went at quite a few people. Um, so uh, but that's what you liked about him too, you know. But boy, shout, out. shout out to everyone that showed up to take a shot for Cookie too. Mm-hmm. Um, that was real dope. I wish Lewis was there. He's much better with words. I couldn't put together a, a great toast, but. Uh, shout out to everybody that showed up. That was uh, and those was across the country who who couldn't show up and tweeted photos of them pouring one out, people and pouring out, one out in the stadium. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm gonna, gonna t- it in the stadium too. Yeah, but no, yeah. today they had some sort of a tailgate event. One of the other tailgates, the Bucks tailgates, uh, and they did a a really big group of people that took a shot for Mark as well, and they they did awesome. say some kind words. And Lewis, thank you again. That was an awesome awesome phone call, man. Um, yeah, dude. Uh, Last, I, I just keep thinking back to when we had him on last week and how much fun that show was. Oh, it was and so cool. he, like it was just that was Mark, dude. That was so cool that we got to have him on there. And uh, it's sad that it was the last time, but to feel him in that moment, at least right before you know he, his passing, was still it's still a really a really uh, I don't want to say enjoyable moment, but it makes you feel good when you watch that episode and you know get to hang out with you know just see how he acts and then he's just a fun fucking dude, man. He's everyone's dad and everyone's brother. It was awesome. I remember the first time he came on the show, I thought we had made it. I'm like, oh, we got Mark Cook? Mm-hmm. What the fuck? Yeah. Oh, shit. <laughs> uh, that's pretty cool, man. Oh, man. This sucks. 
Uh, hey, Stank, can you put the po possibly put a yep. link to this GoFundMe in the description? I'm looking that. for it right now. I'll, I'll, I'll drop I'll, it in I'll the I'll description do. of the podcast once it's, once we're done streaming. I'll drop oh, that okay, all cool. in there too. Perfect. Perfect. Um, So yeah, what's some of your favorite memories, man? Uh, you, you know, Stank just mentioned the ginger badass thing. I think my favorite was the, the ongoing parking lot fight with Abdul Jib or Bahima, whatever the hell the cornerback Jude, name was. Jude Ajay Jude, 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 Jude. yeah. They, remember, remember he fucked up and he got the the pass interference call against the Raiders. Sam right here. <laughs> yeah. They marked like he was like, I want to fucking fight you. I want. It's like what? There was a thing back and forth. They were gonna they were gonna fight in the parking lot for like a year. That's What what, that, I don't know what happened there. Uh, something uh, glitched, okay. but um, yeah, man, it was, that was the type of shit that just made it. That, I mean, Amazing. He, he, also, he had he had, he had so much fun in the locker room when uh, he would be around. What's that 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 tight end or that fullback we had for a little oh, bit? Oh, one that said it was his son. <laughs> yeah, he looked like him too. Um, what was it? And if you guys like, I don't know where we could find it, but I think what what is that show called? What's cooking with Mark? What's cooking? Yeah, yeah. I what's think, cooking? I think those are still on the Peter Reports YouTube page. They are. They so are. You they're, could they're, go back and watch those. Yeah, they're... Alan Cross. Yeah, Alan Cross. That's who it is. Yeah, <clears throat> um, that stuff was good, man. That that was, that was just he was just a fun dude, man. We have another phone call, um, guys. This is, this is about show, you. Th yeah, this is about every one of us. It's not just a show for us. So I want as many of you guys to call in and pay respects or share a story, whatever it is, man. Um, you know, it, it, I want to hear all of it because I'm younger than Stank, and Stank's been around a lot longer, and so he's he's been through that. So I I'm I'm encouraging even you, Stank, to share more of your stories, man, because uh, I only read, you know, I didn't get to hang out with him and all that kind of stuff as much yeah. as you have in the past. I mean, it was, listen, back in the day, being able to uh, to find a Bucks fan, a really true, like, actual addict was difficult. Uh, I, I didn't meet up with Mark until he started working uh, at Peter Report and doing some of his events. And we went, I went to several, several of the events and in Orlando and got to bump into him and, and some of the bowling events too, man. But uh, we shared our, our pain because there was a lot of it. There's been a lot. And, you know, living through a year like last year doesn't still doesn't seem real, even for a guy like Mark, man. Um, so, uh, you know, it's it's amazing on one hand that he got to experience what he did. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I know his pain for this team and all the all the fucking terrible years that we had to endure. Um, we, you know, he shared that with a lot of a lot of the old school books out there. I see Skip skip in the uh, chat and uh you know um you know he's another another one of the original ogs who used to talk about the bucks on the on like tampa bay times forums and 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 mm. the pewter report forums uh you know because there was nowhere to, to really find bucks fans and once we kind of found each other um you know it made being a fan of this team way better man you know i mean technology has brought us all together i would have never met any of you guys uh, without technology so and, and the same goes for for mark and they predate that shit you know pewter report and the old tampa bay um buccaneer store buccaneer heaven um which i worked there yeah, which latte worked at um you know those those things having like a place like that you could go and find people and and uh you know the magazine was born out of that um was awesome and then they built it into what it is you know the uh the, the media empire it is now mark had a big Mark was one of the biggest reasons for that. You know, I mean, uh, he was my I favorite said, part of that podcast and that, that whole website, man. I'm not ashamed yeah. to say that. And that's not a knock on any of those other guys. No, it's not. Yeah. It's just my style has always been that of Mark Cooks. I mean, our show, you know, we're kind of like him. King. We could only hope Segway one day. King, dude. Hope one day to be as good. The Segway King. I mean, the king of all Segways. He, he had the Segway of the year on our show last week. Um, I went back and watched the show, man. I know, I know a lot of people can't do that, but, um, for me, it helped. It brought some closure. I laughed again. Um, the entire show was funny. The entire, the entire show, show funny. is funny. hilarious. Uh, and, um, you know, I'll probably go back and watch it, you know, uh, uh from time to time because what was uh, the segue. God, it was so we were we were well off track. I don't even remember. Yeah, yeah I don't remember. <laughs> I remember I know. tried to make one that was terrible on purpose. It was kind of like my yeah. dad joke. 
Segway. And then we looked to Mark, and then Mark nailed it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I asked him, like, please segue us out of this, but you know, he, <laughs> he, uh, you know, he, he just had a way, you know, with uh, with finding the right words to say, which obviously I can't do right now. It's hard yeah, to he w- hard he, to do that. He will always be my favorite uh, commercial or ad read <laughs> on any podcast ever. He always you know with what? a new one every single. Oh, I just. I just blew ten thousand dollars making these shirts, so uh, yeah. <laughs> I probably need a financial advisor now. Yeah, yeah. Those were the fucking best, man. Those were my favorite fucking bro, bro. ad segue. I bought the fucking manscaped ones. Where he's fucking like, hey, I'm a shave. I'm a shave a fucking. I'm a shave an essence to my chest. <laughs> a pure report to my chest. If uh, we get a five hundred dollar chat donation, oh yeah. man. Um. All right, I'm gonna take. We got three people waiting. We'll take these calls. I'll let's go. go. Let's get them in here, man. I want to hear. I want to hear everybody else. Seven two seven, man. What's up? You're on with the loose cannons, gentlemen. How are you? Good, brother. I mean, we've been better, but um, you know, we we uh, yeah, we wanted to give everybody the opportunity, and obviously, we, we wanted to get our our pain off our chest too, man. So, uh, the floor is yours, dude. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, you know, you guys talked about how you wanted it to be a little more lighthearted. Cause that's the way Cook would have it. Sure. I got a couple. I got a couple stories for you. Well, who, is, who is this first, first man? It's Rendax, bro. Mm. Oh, I think. Oh, fuck it. I don't know. I thought it sounded familiar. It's the first time that Brett and I ever got to go in the media room, and you know, as like as a fan, and you haven't seen it, and you're, you're thinking about it, and you and you're thinking of it more of like a library, you know, with like like even books on the shelves, leather bound spines, and everyone's in big overstuffed chairs, and they're smoking cigars and sipping brandy and talking about you know like oh uh, Leroy Summer Hardy Nickerson who had a bigger impact there and it's not it's like a college library <laughs> with just <laughs> dividers in between the things and it, it's very generic but when you walk in there the first time and you guys will get there all you gotta do is ask for sure it's it's so daunting because like there's everyone like everyone that has a podcast is there plus Greg Almond's there plus Jenna Lane's there you know <clears throat> WDAE's there and uh, so, you know, we'd been doing the, the Peter cast for a couple of years. And so I automatically sort of gravitate towards the side of the room where they are. And, uh, and what made Mark so special is because he, he's so approachable. You know, it's like he's such a goof. He, he, you know, he's such a fan. But he always made it, he was always very approachable. If, if you're going to have a room full of all those reporters and, you have to pick somebody who's not going to look at your cross eyes so they don't know who you are or just sort of welcome you there. Uh, you know, so it'd be Mark. So I gravitated towards Mark and, and uh, so like Mark sitting there and the next him's Scott and next him's Trevor. Uh, and uh, I think it was the first year of, of Matt and, and Grizz was their first year there. And <laughs> so I go to Mark and I start talking to him and, and uh, uh, Derek, what old school had just retired from the podcasting game around that time too. So I go to Mark and, and I'm like, I'm like, Hey, like, like we should, you know, get together, try to have some kind of a, uh, you know, event, uh, you know, get fans out, have some sort of like podcast or something for Derek because of the 10 years, 12 years, he did a podcast and Mark looks at me and he goes, he goes, yeah, that's a good idea. And he, and he goes, what do you think Scott? And Scott looks up and looks, and looks at Mark and goes, so the tight end group and Mark turns away and turns his back towards me and then starts talking to Scott. So you know, I'm just standing there in the middle of the room, standing up, everyone else is sitting down and now I've got no one to talk to and I'm just stuck there because uh, it became a game with Cook and Scott. Like, like Stank was talking about how we go to these events. I'd go to a lot of the events later on, uh, not the early ones, never went to Orlando or anything like that, but later on and you know, after the, you know, they record a pod after it's over, I go up and ask a question and halfway through it, Mark would interrupt to ask Scott a question. And then they both would turn their backs on me and start, talking, and start, start discussing something else. So those guys always busted my balls, but I mean, you know, Poppy said it and then Stank said it. And then, you know, uh, Sammer said it and, you know, I've, I've heard it around before, but it's really the best way to describe him is he was one of us. Like he was like, if you have any doubt about that, go listen to the uh, London Panthers game, uh, their podcast after that, where he just loses it. He finally had enough of Jameis Winston and just goes off for like a half hour about how you can't win with a quarterback like that. 
and you know so it, it it makes you know that that mark was you know he he was the fan and one of the things that was really important to him uh was you know we did those silly little awards and he won one one year for best uh uh, uh best guest and i posted the video you know uh a day awesome or two video. Ago, but, oh you saw it oh yeah cool yeah i forgot like i didn't even know i had it someone went through my timeline <clears> and put it up and so I, I reposted it, you know, cause I this, you know, a little bigger following reposted it. And every time we had Mark on the show after that, he would talk about how he has that thing on the mantle <laughs> in his house. Like that made a big deal to him. Like we do like, you know, one year, I think Levante David got like five of them, not a word. Mike Evans got, I think has holds the record for eight. He has eight total, not a word from Mike Evans, you know, um, we got a letter from Dirk Cutter. I think uh, we got an email from one of the assistant coaches. And that's pretty much it. But Mark, like, put it on the mantle. And it's not because it came from us. It came. It's because it came from you guys. You know, people in the chat, people listening to this, you three. Like, the people that voted for him and that meant so much to him. You know, plus it had his name on it. So it was, it was cool. I just thought that video was great because it, I posted it right after Scott sort of did his – uh, you know, I, I don't know. He's talking. Uh, he did a Fab Five in remembrance and sort of going over some Mark, Mark Cook stories. How he talked about how big, you know, Mark had an ego. And in the video, Mark's like, "Oh, it can't be a bobblehead because the top of the box isn't big enough to hold my head." <laughs> and then how he treats like the interns and stuff. He's like, hold "If my, you listen real coke. close, <laughs> hold my le- <laughs> he goes Taylor, hold my lemonade." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I mean, I mean that's who he was, and Snake talked about it. Like he will, he will, he will bust your balls. But he was, if you can go after any of sort of like the Bucks beat writers, and everyone kind of be okay with it, it was Cook, and that's what kind of made it one of us. You know, he was nuck nuck. He was, you know, he was just, he was just the kid from Polk that, uh, you know now covering his favorite team and, and pretending that, you know, that he didn't live or die with every offense and defensive snap like we all do. We knew he did. We, we, all, knew that too. we all knew it. I mean, best, bro. He will Ren, be missed. Ren, first, Ren. thank you for calling in, man. Awesome. Uh, yeah, your stories, man. Yeah, we miss you calling in, dude. Yeah. For real. If I didn't have three other callers, I would probably just let you take over. And share. <laughs> uh, yeah. Keep sharing. It was, I mean, maybe I'll call back later. We'll see how it goes. I mean, you know, uh, you guys are struggling a little bit with it. You know, you, the lights went on, and now the impact's there, and you're trying to get all your thoughts together. But you know, I just want to kind of call in and lighten it up a little bit, man, because mm-hmm. you know the reason we quit having Mark on the Peter cast so much is because his takes fucking suck. That's like, I mean, stank. You, you said, what did you say when, when uh, Scott was on with you? He said, uh. He said something about Mark, and you're like, Mark talks about football? I mean, he was just that guy where you could, you you know, you, you, you could rib and get away with it. So, anyway, yeah, you got more callers. Uh, great. You know, it's really cool of you guys to do this. Um, you know, I wanted to watch. I wasn't sure I was going to call in, but, uh, you know, I, I just kind of want to throw my two cents in there about what Mark Cook meant to me. So, uh, thank you. Awesome. That was awesome. awesome, dude. Thank you, awesome. Ren. Thank Appreciate you, Ren. you, brother. Thanks, Ren. And uh, I'm just going to – I, pr- I appreciate you, bro, and you know I'm I'm gonna go out of my way and tell everybody that I pre- I do appreciate you, Ren. Um, you know we we love you, dude, and uh, it's uh it's it's cool to hear you. You have really good recall. I wish I did have the, that type of memory for 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 it, um, but uh, it's it's really good to hear those stories. This might be too heavy for Stank all in one all in one night, man. But no expense just got cut again by the Saints. He's oh, a free agent. There, there, there's a chance, Stank. There's a chance. It's time. It's time. He, he could come, come back. Home. It's time he comes back home. <laughs> Return home. We'll take another Jeez. call from the seven two seven. There's a chance. All with thing. those cannons. There's a chance. Oh, oh, you gotta turn your radio uh, down. Uh, turn it down. Return home. Take another call. Seven two seven. Turn your 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 TV down or your computer down. Seven two seven. You're on. This is good, man. Oh, what's, what's up, Skip? Skip? What's up, Skip? Damn. How are you guys doing? <clears throat> man, um, been, been better, man. <clears throat> I'm glad you guys are doing this because um, I felt compelled to call in and show some love for my guy. Um, 
I met Mark when he first joined Pewter Report. He and I kind of hit it off um, with text and talk on the phone often, mainly when I was hitting him up to get some scoop. But over the last few weeks, we talked and texted a lot, even as recently as Monday. Um, being over at camp and not seeing him walking the sidelines has been very weird. Um, but you guys having him on recently was great. I said it on Twitter, and I'll repeat it again. The best thing uh, to come out of him parting ways with Pew Report was he got to get his flowers while he was still with us. And, and that's something that he and I talked about afterwards, and it meant a lot to him. And um, I just want him to know that I miss him. And um, that's it. That's all I got. We all miss him, brother. Uh, Skip, you uh, you know, we've talked a lot. I've You've, you've really helped me get through this too, man. And, um, you know, we all, <laughs> we're all in the same boat. Um, but uh, I'm glad you called in, man. I, I really am. Yeah, man. All right, you guys hang in there and, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Yes, sir. Definitely. Thanks for calling, Skip. Thank you, Skip. <clears throat> Yeah, man. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go back to that 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 last episode he was on. Um, he, you know, rewatching it, seeing seeing, you know, and he he talked about it. He talked about him leaving, you know, leaving Pewter Report and the outcry of uh, support from from all of the people who you know he, he just came out of the woodworks. I don't think he knew how big he was in this community, and and. Um, you know that that is the flowers. That is a blessing. Not everybody gets that. Not everybody gets to 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 hear people tell you that they love you. Um, so uh, I, Trevor was one one of the first people in his his uh, his tweet uh, who mentioned it, and it hadn't dawned on me. Um, you know, and, and it really is a great point, man. Because uh, dude, w once I read what Trevor had tweeted, Latte and I had the same thought of. Remember we were joking around about that scene in Coming to America, yeah. the second movie, where he and Mark was like, "I love the idea." Where he could experience <laughs> yeah, his funeral before actually passing away, and Mark yes. got to do that in a sense. He got to experience that. People were calling in our show, not talking about the Bucks, just talking to Mark and thanking him for being Mark. So yeah. that was, I know it's like, it's a sad moment, but it was still a funny, you know, tie-in. It was, it was, mm -hmm. and it was kind of fitting. It was awesome. Um, and I was happy that he got to experience that because nobody else gets to experience that, man. It's very rare that you get to right. feel that love before you pass away, which is, you know. I think Mark would laugh his ass off about like it. it absolutely. That, yeah, you know. <laughs> absolutely. It was uh, weird. It was more than an outpouring, man. Uh, You're right. Mark fucking, it shook Twitter. Like it shook social media. Mm -hmm. Like the, it made ripples across all plat like mark leaving pewter reporter then parting ways whatever went down it it shook the fuck out of everybody he's pure I mean, report dude it's in it was insane i mean mark was it is huge man i said it in my in my tweet uh you know sandlot legends never die you know what's funny one of my favorite things ever is the people who hated on Mark Cook or like, God, he ruins he ruins everything with this interrupting Stupid said interruptions. And interruptions. And he never brings anything to the table. He's just fucking around the whole time. Dude, that's and, why and, I that's why right. I tuned in. That's why I love it. <laughs> and me being the king of interruptions, and I always fuck everything up and step on my tongue and and yep. spell my tweets and all that shit. Mm -hmm. It always made me laugh because I saw myself so much in him. Um, I love that shit, man. That's what makes us. That's, right. us. that's what, before, like before I said, that's what makes show. us feel. That's what makes us feel okay yeah. being and doing what we do. I mean, he would just interrupt with mm. crazy fucking takes or 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 you know stories, man. Like like Stank said, his his recall was insane. Like I remember this one time in so 1980 something in the locker room that I was like, what? Or like the owner, I had no idea our owner was that fucking cheap. You used to charge people for Gatorades. Like you would charge your players, yeah, dude. That's what's so what cool because. Because he was a fan, every one of those interactions with a player or a general manager of his favorite team were, like, ingrained within him because he was not going to yeah. forget that. Like, dude, we hung out on, on the golf course with Jason Light. We're never going to forget that moment. Ever. Right? 
we're never going to forget the tiny little moment when Jamel Dean comes over and has some wings. It's like a minute moment in our history, but we're not going to forget that. So he's like us. Every fucking, like any other reporter, like, oh, I just I'm, interviewed this. I'm never going to forget that I went to training camp with, 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 with Stank, and Stank said hello to Jason Light. He's like, what's up? Keeps walking, and I say hello. He's like, oh, Poppy. Oh, what's going that's, on? It's a beautiful that's, thing. That's what I'm saying. He's not like Mike Silver. Mike Silver's forgotten half the shit that's happened to him because it's so normal. And no matter what, for Mark, he was a fan. It was never, ever going to be normal. We still have people waiting to talk. It's man. true. And, oh, by the way, Ren, we're, not gonna, we're never going to be in that media room ever. <laughs> never. No, we, don't, good. we don't want to be, by the way. Just, no. so, just to make it very clear. I, if I, if, listen, if they ever try to stick Sam Riley next to Rick Stroud in a media room, <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I won't stop recording. I'm going to tell you right now. I will not stop. And Rick by the way, Stroud we'll get a will good angle. Happy. We'll get a good angle. You know how people get in these shitty angles with the phone moving around? Like, what? Yeah. Listen, Lock it man, in, man. If I'm ever in that room, you best believe I'm bringing a crew of camera people in there. Like, Wait. I'm getting a whole production because <laughs> it'll be the one time I'm in there, but it's going to be epic. Listen, Samer, Rick Stroud, and Ira Kaufman all hanging out together oh, in the same room. Oh, my room. God. <laughs> all enter a room. Who, who you know what? The room alive. And you what do you know think? What? I'm arm wrestling the three of them to make sure I'm the one who's leaving out there with the Hall of Fame credentials. That's damn right. Come on, Ira. Let's go. I'm ready. Hey, Ira. <laughs> Cookie had your back. He did. Don't forget that, bro. Yeah. All right. Cookie we went, we went in hard on you like we do. And, you know, I'm a big fan. I'm not the he, one here. He kept defending Ira. Yeah. He defended you. And I'm, I know you'll never see this because you don't know how to use technology very well. <laughs> that's, he, that's wa- he, a- wanted, he wanted to get Ira on the show. Hey, th- listen, Ira, listen, come listen. on the show. You can't I, push Ira, for it. Ira's a cool guy. I don't know if he put out a statement. I remember him saying wow as a tweet, yeah. and that was about I it. Saw wow, yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't see the people that he is employed by say anything about Mark Cook. So fuck them. As far as I'm concerned, Joe Bucks fan, you're not a Joe Bucks fan because Bucks fans, hey, fuck you. They fucking love Mark Cook. I don't give a fuck if they're from another media company. None of that shit matters, dude. Listen, Samer, listen, Samer, no. Samer, I, Samer, listen Samer. you don't forget, have to public. You don't have to be thing. public about it though. You don't have to publicly come out and 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 say it not to like i'm assuming ira i already know it i mean because because cook showed his love for ira you I know mean. that 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 he that he in his way reached out to him so i don't we don't need to do that i'm just saying man joe bucks fan Take i'm calling call. them out for sure i don't care six seven eight you're on with the loose cannons what's up man hey what's going on fellas just past this mini man First and foremost, man, I want to um, we uh, we want to give uh, prayers to the family, man. I didn't know his family, but they still family, man. I pray for you know. I I can't even. I don't want to imagine what's going through, but God's got got you. It's got him, man. God's got him, man. God's got his hand on everything. I you know I was out here. My wife and myself was out here just hiking every day, trying to stay healthy, man, because you never know when it's time for you to go, bro. Mm-hmm. That night, man, family, it was something, it was something spiritual that night. I, I was like, I could look in his eyes, like something was, something special was about to happen, or either something was heavy on his heart. I don't want to speculate, but I know it was, whatever it was, it was good things, man. And I always wanted to talk to Mark, and I, I'm glad I finally gave him his, to me, I'm glad I gave him his flowers while he was here, joking, calling him the original, the guru. It was something about that night, Samuel. I don't know what it was. Uh, it was so much love for this guy, man, from the community, especially if you're a Buccaneer fan. Like, I'm an OG fan. Like I said, like I told him, man, you OG like me, man. I respect what you do, and the fans respect what you do, man. Mark would seem to be a real good guy to know him personally, just to see him laugh when you said, hey, Pastor, ask him a question. He knows he's going to Detroit. He said, oh, no, 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 no. Don't believe that. Don't believe that. It was just the laughter, man. He said, yeah, some of these guys on this panel need Jesus. He said, three of the guys on there need Jesus. Just things that I remember just to make to see him laugh, man. And, and like I said, I, I didn't really know Mark Cook. I've seen a lot of his articles and what he's done. I have some things I want to ask him because I used to work for the Tampa Tribune too, but not in that aspect. I used to sell the newspapers, man, for Tampa Tribune before I left and came to Atlanta before it went under. But man, my play, prayers go out to his family and to all the fans. And I seen that yesterday. Bucks are a uh, top class organization. They shot him out on the on a, on on the Tron, man, and. 
I just keep playing that the God be with their family, man, them. Because at the end of the day, when when everything settled down and they turn around, it's just the family. God got you. To the family, God got you. When all this is said and done and, and everybody goes home and you're home alone, God's got you. And I just had to keep him 100. I lost my mom. I lost a lot of people. And I know that God's got the family. But let's keep them in prayer, y'all. Let's keep them in prayer. And, um, uh, Sammy, I, I'm not going to go on and on, man, but Poppy Latte, uh, Stank, you guys, you know, I'm always proud of you guys, man. Y'all, 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 we passing on the mantle to y'all. I'm 57. And I love the new generation of Buck fans, man. We pass this for y'all to take, y'all take it and take it to another heights, man, because y'all going, now y'all are OGs now. Everything's been passed down to you guys. Y'all done seen the Bucks winning in the Super Bowl. Y'all, y'all seen all that. Us OGs, we've seen it from the beginning to the end. But the the mantle has been passed down to you guys, you younger guys. You, the, y'all keep the Bucks hype, keep it going for the fans, bro. And um, I'm not going to stay on it too long, man. I just, you know, it took me by surprise. I heard about it when I was in Atlanta. I was listening to 92 9 the game. I kept hearing him saying, Mark, Mark. I made it last night, Cook, and when I just started seeing him over the, over the internet, I said, oh, my God. I just talked to his brother last week, but I'm glad I gave him his, fly, his flowers while he's still here. Mm-hmm. Yo, family, uh, God bless y'all, man, and all the Loose Cannon family, man. And uh, this ain't, right now ain't about the Bucks. Right now it's about our brother, man. He's truly going to be missed. We love you, Mark Cook. And right now, I'm in the in, put you in the ring of honor of the book myself in the ring of honors in the Blues Cannon Hall of Fame. Our first, our first introduction, and I hope I say it right. It's just kind of motion right now. You are the original, like I told him. You are the original gangster. You are the guy that let people know what the bus. You kept it real, my dude. I love you for that. I'm glad I got a chance to talk to you and give you your flowers while you were here. God bless y'all, man. This is past the out, man. And um, we, the marathon continues. Like my boy Nipsey said, the marathon, you guys, you guys holding the tent. You, he's passing the, he passed the mantle down to you guys. You guys got to take it and run with it. Y'all the new generation of Buff fans. Y'all do what it do. Make us OGs proud, man. I'm already proud, man. All right, I'm signing out. Peace. Blessings Peace, to the man. family. Y'all got y'all, man. I love hey, y'all. We'll see, we'll yeah. see, you, in, we'll see yeah. you in Georgia, Smitty. Yes, sir. We will see you in Georgia. You in Atlanta, man. Awesome. And listen, I, I appreciate Pastor's kind words. Um, we can't fill Mark's shoe, Mark mm-hmm. shoes. <laughs> we ain't even close, man. Those are some big yeah. shoes to fill. Um, we got a while ago for even close yeah, no. to that. Um, appreciate it. We'll, we'll we'll take it and run with it and, and continue to push it and push Buck's content, like you said. But yeah, we can't fill those shoes. But what we will do is we'll still be fans. We'll, we'll still be our, ourselves, man. We'll honor because, him that way. Yeah. You know, that, that's, uh, that's what I loved about him. And it's just a reminder uh, of, of how, you know, how short life is, man. And, and uh, it, when things like this happen, and obviously um, these last two years have been full of moments like this in so many ways, you know, starting with, you know, the beginning of the pandemic and Kobe and all that shit. I mean, you know, it's it's becoming all too familiar to us. It never it never doesn't mean it gets any easier. Um, but uh, you know, people touch us throughout our lives, man. And he's one of those guys that that's touched a lot of people, impacted me, uh, you know, in a lot of ways. And uh, there's no, it's impossible to forget that. And so I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep his memory alive and doing what we do and being being fans that love this team like he did. And uh, that's never gonna change. You got to keep representing your father, man. Your father's legacy. We joked about it before the last <laughs> I know, episode. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you know that yeah, we took our. We took our. He told me you're, you're on the last podcast. Yeah, I, you know, somebody need to take the shirt off. He's like, oh, my son's gonna take his shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of sons, though, it'd be cool if the Bucks fucking, you know, gave the uh, the Cook family Douglas. or his, or Douglas or somebody, um, you know, something uh, to honor his father. Maybe a Super Bowl ring. I don't know. That would be actually pretty fucking cool. I'm not trying they, to spend the Glazers' money, but how awesome they, would that be? They're probably going to give him one of those honorary jerseys, too, with the name Cook on uh, the back, for sure. That's, that's, if not, we will. Yeah. I forgot a way to do something. Um, I'm going to get these last two callers in and 
352, you're on with the loose cannons. Hey, guys. It's uh, Kyle up in Crystal River. What's, What's going up, on, Kyle? Kyle? What's up, going? How you doing? Just first off, wanting to give my prayers out to the Cook family. And uh, so it's unfortunate to have such a, a sad event whenever uh, whenever we're trying to kick off the mm-hmm. season. But uh, unfortunately, these things, they just, uh, you, you don't plan them. And, no, you don't, man. But I appreciate you guys listening to all the different stories, you know. Mm-hmm. You guys are worried about stepping on other people's toes, but I hear stories that I might not hear other places. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah. yeah, man. Um, you know, it's – uh. You know, we, we just try to talk Bucks football, man. And, and that's why, you know, having a guy like like Cookie on the show mean, meant a lot to us, obviously, because he's such a wealth of knowledge about the team. Um, you know, but but uh, he shared shares things. And, uh, you know, the guys joked about um, replacing me with Cook. And um, I was like, shit, I, I'll still watch the show. <laughs> you know, I, I, I'll still be a fan. We need somebody to stay awake. That's why. He, he was about to be like Jameis. Like, man, well, shit, I got replaced by the GOAT. I got no exactly. What about exactly. Exactly. Just be the same thing. Like, how can you get mad? You know, I, I would have been a little sad, you know, and, I, you know, I want to be on the boat parade. I want to boat parade, too. I'll have given that speech at the end of the day, too. Uh, but, uh, listen, we're never going to – we're always going to keep it – keep it. This, this has been a heavy show, but um, – it's not always going to be like that, um, but uh, you know, th- this had it, in my mind, this had to happen um, because we we couldn't press on with the with the with uh, our show and go into the new season without uh, showing our man, you know, all the love. I appreciate it, no doubt. That's why I'm I'm letting you guys know. Keep it going, man. I watch the show every time. I uh, I bump into other people that watch the show and it. It gets me excited. So I know there's plenty of people out there that are they're they're just ready for the loose cannons family to take off, man. You guys gotta keep going. Oh yeah, we we won't stop, man. We don't plan on stopping, man. If anything, Mark's gonna remind us to never fucking stop. Shit. Yeah, exactly. We're we're fans. It's uh in in a weird way, sometimes these things end up you know, personally anyway anyways, they end up inspiring me and reminding me, um, you know, uh, of uh what's important and um, reaching out to those and that you love and you care about and expressing those things is, is just something that's been on my mind since, you know, since the moment I heard the news, uh, you know, so and it's funny because Chris Thomas used to end his every, every show saying that tell the ones you love that you love them, um, you know, and so sometimes that's forgotten, man, because the days go by, you know, and, and uh, last season was incredible, by the way, you know, how, in a crazy way, how cool is it? The last game he ever got to see was the Bucks winning the Super Bowl. He was there. He, he was there. got. He got to be there. You know what yeah. I mean? So uh, it's pretty. It's pretty. I mean, listen. I, I don't. I don't know about you guys, but that's the way I want to go. <laughs> I, that would be. That'd be the phenomenal. You know, end of a run. That'd be awesome. <clears throat> I mean, I, I think a lot of I, a lot of people share that sentiment, man. Right. Um, that's that's cool, especially yeah. being a fan of this team since the day it was born. Uh, that's rough, yeah. man. That's fucking rough. I'm only I've only been around since 1996 as a fan. Yeah. Yeah. You've been there since '76. That's some rough shit. <laughs> I'm not interested. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. you're not that much younger than 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 uh, your dad. So you know. Uh, I know. I know that weird little. Uh, thing there. Uh, we're gonna take one more caller, and then Ren's gonna come back with some sort of an ID that we'll oh, okay, cool. pull off, and we'll kind of close the show after that. Um, three, two, one. You're on with the loose cannons. What's up? Three, two, one. What's up? Turn your radio down. Hey, how's it going? How's it going? Good how's man. Turn your turn your TV or radio down real quick. Yeah, I got it. I got it. Um, uh, it's salty in Orlando. What's going on, Salty? Salty Buccaneers. What's up, brother? Hey, what's up, guys? Hey, so this shit hit me hard, man. <laughs> with with Mark, he 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 just 
he just felt like like he was your uncle, you know, like that uncle that had season tickets, and you just wanted to be cool enough to go to the games with him. Like, that's perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just, uh, I'm having a little trouble getting it out, but like, just the wealth of stories he had. Like he would, he he'd always tell you something new about the Bucks that you're just like, holy shit, I never knew that. Mm-hmm. And he was just like a compendium of knowledge. Just like that shit just always got to me, and like it, it it was just like so cool the way he he just always knew what was up with the Bucks. He'd always come on. He was always fair, always fair. Like y'all said it the best. Like he never once like would single a player out and just like drag it on. And just like he's fucking trash or something like that. And like he was always like, well, you know what? He he made a couple plays, like, and he'd always like balance it out. But yeah, he was fair, just, and, he, uh, and and even with the players in the locker room, you know, a lot of times the players in the media don't get along or they don't have any kind of personal relationship. Right. Really, that's that's frowned upon. But Mark was different, man. The players loved him. Well, I heard a story I can't remember right now, and please, anybody in the chat, let me know if if, if I'm if I'm misquoting. Uh, that's the last thing I want to do. But on one of his last episodes on on Pewter Report, he was talking about a player that kept interrupting him as he was doing an interview, and I, I don't remember the player, but he kept interrupting him, interrupting him, and he finally turned to the guy and he's like, you know, like, what the fuck is your problem, bro? I'm trying to do my job here. <laughs> you know, this dude's like six five, huge. The player that he's in, he was like, whoa, 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 you don't have to do that because the. the the guy was, you know, Mark turned and was like, what's up? Like, stop the bullshit. So they got nose to nose. And he's like, well, and then Mark Paz like, well, it was more like I was nose to chest. But you know what I'm saying? It's just that's that's ginger that ginger badass, badass bro. Ginger yeah. Badass. Yeah. We all know. We all know Ginger who, who Skip you know, says it was they're... Alvin Harper who kept yes. interrupting him. Yes. Right. That's, yes. Thank that's you. Where the Alvin Harper hey, came from. I feel like I feel like Mark would have would have rocked Alvin, Alvin Harper's life, bro. I think so. Well, that's, that's one of the things that Trevor shared. I think that they were doing a, or maybe it was Ledger who shared it, where they were doing a top 10 or top five Buccaneers of all yeah. time. And just to fuck with Mark, they didn't tell him, but they planned behind the scenes to have Alvin Harper be higher than like Leroy Selman or something like that. And well, he made he, the list. Yeah, like, what? he lost it because of that. And this, it was like one of the funniest moments they had. Oh, bro. If the, when, if the when, internet when, existed when Alvin Harper came to Tampa, because he was, he was like, it was like right when free agency became a thing. He was our first first big free agent signing, uh, or you know, the, but he was looked at as the savior. I kind of feel bad for Alvin Harper because he was trash as a Buccaneer. <laughs> Came here and didn't give so a shit about this Burt team. So he's Burt Emanuel before Burt Emanuel. Got it. Yeah, poor, I would say more like Deshaun Jackson. You know, like a guy came here and was like, ah, like he was slumming it in Tampa, but he got paid. Um, you but, don't yeah, remember yeah. Burt Emanuel was supposed to be like no, guys, I, guys yeah, taking was, money from the Bucks. Let's not, let's <laughs> not get too off topic with Emanuel. Yeah. Who, who gives a shit? <laughs> Um, the other one that I thought was awesome, Sam, was um, when Ledger didn't put Leroy Selman in his top five. And Mark oh, yeah. lost his he went shit. Off on him. Oh, Mark he went lost. Off. He's like, how dare you? Sorry, a Steelers fan has no business making a Buccaneers top 10. Man. Sorry, go, go ahead, yeah. Salty. Sorry about that. We kind of hijacked your call there for a little bit. Oh, no, 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 man. I, I always enjoy listening to y'all. Like y'all, y'all, y'all got it, and I'm glad y'all got to know him because, like I said, he was like he was like that uncle, but like the uncle I didn't know. <laughs> like I just, I just wish, I, I wish I was able to go to all the games with him because, like, you know that motherfucker had so much fun yeah. at the games, even when we were terrible. Oh my god! So oh, only old for, school. For us to, for us to, for us to go out and give him an awesome awesome last year of life like Mm -hmm. i'm so happy that happened because nobody deserved it more than him nobody i can't wait to hear what scott has to say about his antics in the press box because he's been watching the games from the press box for over a decade now right so am i the only one that's been uh like refreshing like crazy trying to see like pewter report put something out like they're recording they're doing their show tomorrow 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 they're doing that no, it's seven. They seven. Moved it. yeah, they, yeah, they're bringing tomorrow, in Trevor tomorrow Sigma. night. Yeah, they're doing their show. At, uh, it's gonna tomorrow. be. Do not miss that show. I'm not. I'm not. Oh, I will. I, I will not miss that show. I'm gonna be so drunk from all the shots Facts. that I'm gonna take Facts. for Mark. Facts. <laughs> I like it. I'll be right there with you. All right, man. I appreciate yeah. you calling in, Salty Buck. Thank you, dude. Uh, Thank you, Salty. 
Yeah, man. Call in again. Hey, don't be a great stranger. Follow, great follow on Twitter, too. That's the first time you call. What the fuck, bro? Don't be a stranger. Yeah, I know. I know. I've, I've been meaning to get out to it, but, like, I, I've been so busy with work and school. But, yo, I'm I'm a season ticket holder, so let's link up. Dolphy, find us, bro. Like, Hell yeah, man. Yeah, I'm, I mean, I'm in 231. I think you Oh, wait, wait, wait. We're in 230. What the fuck? We're in 230, oh, bro. What? What the fuck? Oh, yeah, we're section what? bros. We're section bros. We're section on, bros. Yeah, but listen, bro. listen. Listen, yeah. you can come hang out with me and Stank, but to get to the, you need security or different access to get where Samer watches games. Sure. He watches it on a throne <laughs> that's held up by his servants at all times as he's being fanned. Yeah, you gotta and come with grapes. Like two Persian I don't, cats. I don't, I don't call them servants. It's a little demeaning. They prefer to go oh, by okay, fans. Sorry. Oh, the fans. They're your fans. So you're a fan of the, okay, with, and you sit with Bucks fans and then your fans hold they're, you up. They're as, fans and they, and their job is to fan him. To yeah. fan him. And yeah. There fans. are, there fan are fans. fanning fans too. Those are the ones that fan, fan. fan. Oh. Oh. But you're fanning, your fanning fans have fan, fanning fans? <laughs> I, I'm lost. Yeah. It's like inception, my, but my royalty. Seat, my seats are right in line with the uh, with the field goal, with the, the goal post. So, like, that shit's Bro. frustrating, man. I can't see if we make field goals or not. Oh, that's yeah, that, that's the that's the, that's the bullshit about this. Is your first time calling, though, bro. Like Ren said, we got to keep it on on. We got to keep it on brand, bro. It, you know, it's a celebration yeah. of life. And Mark, Mark True. loved yeah, when we did yeah, this. Yeah. Mark loved when we did this. Mm. How you having could, your wings, absolutely. salty? Are you absolutely. having them? Are you having them salty and sauced? Are you having them uh, cockboard dry, and are you dipping them in blue cheese or shit? I am bougie as fuck when it comes to wings. Oh, you eat boneless. Like, oh, you eat boneless. No, hell <laughs> you don't want to get dirty. You don't hey, want to get dirty. Hey, you no, eat boneless. No, 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 no. I'm bougie too, those but are, I get my hands. Chicken nuggets. Those yeah. are chicken nuggets. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> nah, nah. What what I like is I like them baked. I like them grilled. Like, don't just throw them in the fryer. Don't. Don't like ruin all the marinade and shit. Like I want that shit. These are some of right my right. methods. You've seen mm -hmm. my my wing porn and Sammer's wing porn. These these are these are some of my you roast it, then you porn. finish on the grill. Mm. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And, and you, you didn't like the more salty, important one. Extra, extra hot. I don't like my wings sweet. I like them extra hot. Okay. And then uh, no sauce, no no like no like branch blue cheese. Like I want the wing how it's meant purist. to taste. Oh, you're a purist. purist. You're like Bruce yeah. Arians. That's perfect. Purist. No problem. I'll take it. Yeah. That's a winning Thank call. Salty. Yeah, Salty, we're going to be yeah, sharing no some wings That's... together at game since you're our section brother. We're yeah, section we, yeah. brothers. Yeah. Uh, hey, when I see you, I'll feed you wings, bro. Yeah. We're going to have our meat in your mouth, man. Um, it's going to be amazing. Come join us on, on, about... hey, on, on the opener. We're going to be in lot six, motherfuckers. A lot of you guys talked about the stories that Mark had. One of the cool things about when we'd have him on our show was the stories he would tell us off air things that he would say that we cannot repeat and um it was really odd and uh, i'm i'm glad that it happened um mm -hmm. we talked to him collectively as a group for about an hour after that last show we did with him right you guys remember that it was awesome and then you guys had to go and i ended up going off on a tangent with him and i was i was here in the office till about 1 1 15 in the morning i talked to him for another two and a half hours after you guys left and dude, the stuff that he talked about and just picking his brain, talking back and forth, just all that stuff. It, like I was taking it for granted at that moment, but I'm glad that I was so in it when it was happening because now it's something cool that I can look back at. Um, it was really, really cool. So uh, that was <clears throat> such a good thing that happened from that night that um, it was special. And I'll, I will say from that conversation, Mark was really excited about the next step of what he was going to yeah, do. He was. he was really, really excited. Um, and I was excited too because I had a feeling it was going to be something really, really special. So uh, that's unfortunate. Um, but I think I think Ren is here now. We're going to take one. The, Ren, you're the last we're take, call. We, we're going to take Ren and then give our last thoughts or give our last thoughts and take Ren? We'll take Ren, give our last thoughts, and wrap up this show. Um, it's getting a little bit late. So, uh, Ren, welcome back. What is this idea that you think only the loose cannons can pull off? Hey guys, yeah, sorry to call back. Um, here's my idea. I want to say this at the, uh, during my first call, but I totally forgot about it. Okay, next year we're going to. I'm sure you guys are going to come strong for training camp, right? Hey guys, yeah, yes. Sorry to call back. Um, yes. Okay. So, what do you think of this? Hey, rookie mistake. Turn, tele turn television down. It's, turn, turn my, TV. it's not my. It's not my. It's not my television down. I have someone. I have a, uh, a fan that. Uh, <laughs> that. Uh, what do you call it? Like types it out, um, and they decide to Google. Oh, it's a stenographer. Sorry. 
not a stenographer. Like I can't afford somebody that actually went to school and knows that funky typewriter. It's 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 just someone who dictates for me. Sorry. Okay. It. So it's only a two month course. <laughs> it's only a two month course. <laughs> Okay, let her, it's, let her it's, it's, it's not the length of the course. It's paying someone who has that who has that skill. Yeah, and they have to have T Rex T Rex on so top Ren, of that. Ren, Ren, Ren. Me and Snagger with yeah. you, bro. We don't have the oil money this this fucking Samer guy has. I don't have oil yeah, money. Yeah, I, I, I mean, you, you know, guys can see it's yeah, cropped, but I have like a line of stenographers. I have Dick. <laughs> they're all like, there's a there's a. Course. I have one of those sketch artists that you see in the courthouses. They just constantly <laughs> oh, sketching. Jesus He's doing a sketch of the podcast. <laughs> All right, you never, you never know when you're going to need it. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, no, no, get, no, get this, get this. So I come home like a week and a half ago, and guess what's sitting on the dining room table? Food. A bidet. A bidet! A bidet! A bidet. A bidet. <laughs> yes! I mean, obviously, it's not a separate one. It's one that's sort of you attach to inside of the toilet. You but, cannot uh, see Samer's face right now, but he is so happy, Ren. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, man. Right now. I'm so proud <laughs> of you and your, your clean asshole. Go ahead. <laughs> so, okay, so training camp, you guys are going to go hard. Here's my idea, and I think it, it's something that can sort of go on for years down the road, kind of like the Buccaneers old lineman in Turkey Bay. How about, and if you don't like it, don't worry about it, but how about a Mark Cook day where, where we talk to – you guys talk to your fans, we talk to our fans, we'll get other, you know, fringe media people involved. And there's one day a year that we all show up to training camp dressed up like Mark Cook in any phase. Crims- like creams cool. It's got to be a creams- creams- you day. Could, you, you, could do a, a, you could be any way you want to. Now, my personal favorite was, like, I, I would do, like, the half-cropped uh, airbrush Death Leopard shirt with the the cook uh, across the back that he talked about on the pod one time, and he thought he was like the coolest dude in school with the short shorts and the long tube socks. That would be my my Mark Cook. But I think it would be cool that, you know, we get, you know, 20 people, 50 people, how many people show up that dress up one day a year at training camp as Mark Cook? And like we make chance, like one of us, one of us. Just, Ren, you know, just Ren, something. Ren, would you grow? Would you grow, you know, a Polk County beard and dye it orange for this day? I would. I would. I would Let's put food go. coloring it in my beard. For, I want to see. I want to see Samer and and Christian both in ginger face. You think I'm afraid, bro? Like, Here's my wife is a stylist. You can dye. I mean, I'm going full blown. I'm not going. I'm not going food coloring. I'm going orange for the whole month until I shave it off. Here's the secret, man. You but you can do it like. I'm brunette, right? I'm. Br- I got this beautiful color. I'm. But- Are you? Yep. When Are my, you? Okay. When, when my hair grows longer on my beard, the longer it gets, it eventually goes into a weird, like amber, orangish color. It's very odd. So yeah. you're not shaving for the month before training camp. I'll just not. Yeah, sh- by the way, Ren, yeah. I. Lo- it's a good idea. I'm I like sure it. you already know. We love the idea. Fuck mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. For sure. Yeah, we're doing it. So anyway, I just want to throw that out there. And uh, again, you know, great idea, great show. It was cool to hear, you know, these people come on. And, and you know, it, it, it was it was nice, and it's going to sound kind of weird, but it was nice to hear people struggle to get their feelings out of Bar- about Mark Cook because it, it meant so much to them that here we are like, you know, half a week later and people still can't put into words what it meant. I mean... I know, Poppy, you saw my tweet. When I went on social media, I was at work. I'm just like, no, like, no. Like, I refuse to believe this. No, 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 no. Fuck you. You're liars. Bullshit. Like, point at somebody. Who, whose fault is it? Point. Point. Because I'm going to fucking kill him. Like, that's how I felt when I saw that on social media. So it just really shows how much he meant to every single one of us in the same way. But we all felt like he was ours. You know, mm-hmm. like we all felt like we were Mark Cook's best friend. And that was yeah. just a testament to how he made everyone feel. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the fact that he recognized me a few years ago, I didn't know what he looked like because I'd only ever listened to him and read his articles. I didn't actually know what he looked like. And all of a sudden he yells out my name. And I look down. I'm like, who's this short dude yelling? Who is this guy? And he goes, Mark Cook, the Peter Park. I'm like, what, what? You know who I am? He's like, absolutely, man. I'm like, oh, that's freaking awesome. And it was just such mm-hmm. a cool moment for me. It was before I even had a podcast or any of this nonsense. It was just such a cool thing. Like, I don't know. He was this like larger than life fan that was doing what you know what I would love to do one day. Hey, Ren. Somebody, yeah. somebody said in the chat, "Why not show up shirtless?" 
No, yeah. somebody, this guy in the chat said you guys should have started all started the show shirtless, lying in your recliners. You're right, Smilegate. Um, yeah. I uh, we, we fucked I, up. We did. We fucked it we up. We'll be better up. next time. I'm usually shirtless. <laughs> Me and Mark were shirtless together on the last episode. It was uh, amazing. Yeah. So um, and Ren. And yes, Ren, you're right. Uh, when you when your tweet that you refused, and um, we've we've said this term a lot tonight. Um, but not not in this context. He was one of us, and that's what made him special to us, is that he was one of us, and he was in that room. You, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Yeah. Because yeah. he yeah. had, like, real knowledge, can touch. I can't put it in the words. You know what I mean? Like, he was in that room. He was in the fucking room. He was he one of us. He was in the room. The same, he cared the, about same, the... the same frustration and anger he had at the offensive line after a game that where we just wanted mm -hmm. to, like, yell and curse at somebody. You knew he was there, and he was going to ask a question that would get right. us an answer or make us feel right. better. You know when he walked into the locker room and he saw Caleb Beninock, he gave him a mean <laughs> ginger a stare. Fuck yeah. For us. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, Red, yeah, like, it. don't say that fucking name. Don't say that name. For all of you guys yeah. who have not, maybe maybe you're new to this show or mm -hmm. whatever, if you haven't seen the last episode that we had with Mark, I think it was two episodes back, check it out. It talks about... You get to you get to hear him talk about how he felt about you guys and us and just fans and and yeah. how much it meant to him for everyone to reach out after his parting from Pewter Report. I mean, just listening to him and that show. And I'm not saying this for clicks or views, guys. Like I don't care about yeah. that shit. I'm honestly saying it because I've watched it to just hear him talk about how much it meant to him. And in a moment like this, mm -hmm. this is kind of the coolest thing that to, to be able to look back on and listen to him. You know, it's 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 surreal and it's weird and. It's very much like when Kobe Bryant passed away, but I didn't know Kobe Bryant. I felt like I did, but I actually do. I did know Mark Cook, so um, I appreciate you calling in, Ren. And and, and I do have to say before Ren gets off, though, well. Sammer, you 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 should you should talk to Ren later or when we get a chance. Ren's got some mean fucking recipes, bro. Yeah, we all know Sorry. fucking. I gotta Ren, keep it on brand. Listen, Ren's got chef. some mean motherfucking right. recipes, bro. Ren's a, hey, Ren's a chef, or he's worked with like. I'm in the middle of a point. Shut your mouth. Love you. <laughs> Ren gave me a freaking recipe. Listen here. Did guys. you try it? Are you listening? Your wings have been his Coconut the entire time. Coconut curry short ribs that okay. fucking hmm. changed my life. Oh my God, Ren. Yes, short I ribs. tried it. Ren, when are, we go, when are you inviting us over to your palatious estate and cooking for us? When's that going to happen? Please. Well, uh... There's only room at the table for two extra. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Wait, there's what do you only mean, at the room at the table. <laughs> you can get there's a bigger like, table. Well, you know, I then I have to cut the uh, stenographer, and I'm not prepared <laughs> to do that. Mm. <laughs> no, um, no, uh, the answer is never. Um, <laughs> you guys are coming over to my house. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, but, but it's no big deal. No, it's no big deal. But I mean, like, if you guys are serious and, and you know you want to talk food or, or, or uh, like, maybe we all could like get together somewhere at someone's house that is bigger, uh, and we have like a, a burger off, a wing off, a cook off, best recipe off, beat Bobby Flay type of thing. Like, I'm all in. Like, I I know two fun. things. I I know two things. I know food. And I know Bucks football. Everything else, I, I don't know what the hell I'm talking about. That's why I only talk about those two things. I fucking love it, Ren. We need to talk more. I like I like the idea. Listen, like my house is always open to everyone. Yeah. I'm right here by the stadium. You guys, you know, you need anything. You need a place to stay. Uh, I'm going to make you pay. But, hey, come on. I, I so, so there you go, Ren. Oh, so there you go, Ren. Ren and Bucks, your Ren, hold on. Ren and Bucks fans. Tweet out my address. <laughs> Pewtercast fans and, 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 and Loose Cannons fans and all and that. Bucks fans in general. Bucks in general. We're going to tweet Saints out. Saints fans. Thanks. Falcons address. Fans. Panthers yeah, fans. We're going to tweet Everyone. out his address. <laughs> and we're going to have a Bobby Flay-esque type mm -hmm. tournament. And you guys are all welcome to be fucking judges. Right in Stank's yeah. backyard. Right it's in my amazing. backyard. He yes. has a hot Listen, tub, too. No. I will be I serving my wings from the hot I tub. I have a hot tub, a hot wife who... Like, listen, she loves her guns, bro. So don't step out of line, dude. She threatened to shoot me in front of Samer just... Days ago, I witnessed true. I witnessed a very odd um, spousal abuse scenario situation play mm -hmm. out right in front of my and it wasn't what you know most people think it's you know the man is the abusive spouse in my house. I honestly I felt bad for staying like I wanted to I wanted to rescue him. 
Thank blink twice if you're not okay. Um, I can't do it. She's he's watching. not even allowed to do this. She's watching, no. she's she's watching allowed. right now. I will be Hi, serving baby. my wings. Love you. From the hot tub, I will begin their first cooking process by boiling them in said hot tub as well, and then oh I will season God. them. And then, I mean, I'll add more seasoning, of course. And who then, wants wings that are boiled in a hot tub with Sammer's juices? Yeah, I'll, I'll hard pass. I don't know, man. Crude oil, the bath I take every day, nope. leaves I'm some good. delicious, delicious taste. Listen. Oh, thank shit. You. Yeah. Look, look, Poppy will have all the cuts done by, by Publix. Just guessing. They're coming at me, bro, because listen, listen, Ren, Publix, where shopping is a pleasure. If I buy mm. my wings, why should I have to go yeah. separate them and take the wing tips off? Nothing wrong with that. You know, hard that sh fuck that. You're getting the wing tips at my house. I cook, I, cook, tips I cook my wings. It's all my recipe and everything. But you think I lay a single fucking finger on any of the process? You're crazy. Mm. I watch. Yeah. <laughs> I just guide it all. They've been trained oh meticulously God. at every stage of the process. I'm done. Ren, Listen, Ren, uh, what's your Ren, what's your opinion on keeping the wing tips on? No, on we're not the asking wing. it. We know the answer. You take it off. No one keeps it on but you and that one joint down the street that no one eats beyond 11, 8, 11 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> because you have no wing option. Are you talking about Wicked Oak Barbecue where they have purple guava flan and it's fucking literally and the most amazing smoke from wings. the heavens and Ren, smoke wait, wings? Wait, wait, Ren. Wing oh, no. tip or no wing tip? Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I've never really give, got to giving you guys sort of my whole wing philosophy. No, we uh, are but intrigued. Oh God! I feel like he's right. gonna go on a rant. No, I'm not. No, I got, no, like, I got a tip, piss, no and I need to end the show. So <laughs> don't go on no, a no, rant. No, no, no. I want to hear. Listen, I hear listen. I tune hear. in. Hey, everybody, right. tune in next show for Ren's wing philosophy. <laughs> I'll, be, I'll, I'll be very quick. If it's not super hot, wet vinegar, you don't need ranch or blue cheese because that's the cooling agent. Mm -hmm. If you're gonna dip them in like honey garlic, mm -hmm. the ranch and blue cheese, it's not necessary. Actually, it mm -hmm. takes away from the flavor of the wing. Tip or no tip, it really doesn't matter. Dry rub, not my favorite, but I can see out there that, you know, I, I, I appreciate it. Um, but I'm still a classic guy. Deep fry them, crisp them, drop them in like super extra hot vinegar, burn your lips, and blue cheese. That, that's what I like. But if, it, but, if you're not, but, but if it's not a vinegar-based hot sauce, there's no I, reason for either it. one. Yeah, no, I respect yeah, it. If no. I'm eating a garlic parm wing, like from Anthony's Cold Fire, they're amazing, garlic romano, I don't need blue cheese. It's fine. But no, uh, you don't make sure, vinegary buffalo. I make sure uh, you ban this guy, Phil, in the chat who said he switched to buffalo cauliflower. Uh, ban uh, the guy. What, what? Ban him. Yeah, ban. <laughs> Mark would want us to do that. So listen. Ren, thank you so much for calling in again. We're going to give our last anyway, and get out of here. Yeah, yeah. Cut me off, guys. I appreciate it. You guys did a great job tonight. Way to, uh, to step up to the plate and uh, give some people an outlet to talk about cooking. Thank Thanks, you. Man. Appreciate it. Thanks, Thanks brother. You, See you around. For everybody who called in, uh, loved it. I mean, it's a sad moment, but we we love the stories. We like <laughs> to hear people like like Ren said struggle to talk about Mark Cook. Uh, that's a really good line, man. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was a really good way yeah. to say it. Um, again, we send out our condolences to Mark's family, his son Douglas, his significant other, his girl. I think he's his girlfriend, right, Daisy. Um, Justin, who's a who's a good family. follow on Twitter. Uh, as well um yeah man obviously obviously uh we, you know show your support um stammer's gonna link the gofundme link in the chat uh to, uh to uh to the gofundme that they help me out here bro <laughs> i will link the gofundme that um uh, they didn't start themselves somebody else did um to help them with the expenses uh of the funeral and all that stuff i will link the information for the funeral and the visitation and um like we said earlier mark actually wants in his honor he would want you guys to just donate to the arians family foundation in his honor mm -hmm. um if you can help to go fund me and the family obviously do that as well um i would do that first probably um but everyone out there again thank you so much for participating and doing this with us um i want to love mark cook last memory i have of mark um happened off air i'd like to share with the uh people in the chat and people watching um <clears throat> a lot of stuff tonight has been about mark cook the the writer and the content creator for the bucks uh but my last memory of of him will be him talking about his son and yeah. the yes. last thing he told us was 
Um, I'm excited about my next opportunity and I can't wait to get going because I need to start producing because I have a son and he's 18 and he's got his own job. So it's not because he's not doing it, but because um, kids just need help every now and then. And you know what? He paused and he got emotional. And he said, and damn it, he fucking deserves it. He's had it hard enough. So I will spend the rest of my life, which wasn't very long after, but, um, you know, giving everything to him. So he was 1000% about his family and, uh, mm. my prayers go out to them. Um, rest in peace, cookie. Rest in peace, rest baby. Peace, cookie. Rest in peace, man. See you on the other side. Absolutely.